All right. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> without, we'll move on straight to our second presenter. Um, he is in the person of Mr. Francis Andolfo. He holds a Master of Science degree in Geoinformation Science, and he's a senior. He's a senior GIS and remote sensing technician at the Geography and Resource Development Department of the University of Ghana. He's also the founder and volunteer executive coordinator of Hoya Geospatial, a nonprofit organization that seeks to create a geospatial ecosystem that uses geospatial technologies to promote development. In his spare time, he enjoys listening to music, watching documentaries, and learning about new scientific developments. Um, I, I, I secretly learned also that he's an avid Chelsea supporter. Uh, thankfully, they've begun the season on a high note, so hopefully his presentation will wow us. All right, over to you, and Francis. Thank you very much, Samuel. I hope you can hear me. Yes, I can. Yes, uh, I think I need to be permitted to share my screen. It's saying sure. that the other person is. Still All right. Sharing. I think you have the, the permission now. <clears throat> okay. Uh, can you see? Can you see my screen? Yes, Francis, we can see your screen. Okay, so um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, good. My name is Francis Andolfo, and I like, um, someone has already introduced me, so I won't speak much about uh, myself. I'm going to present to us about how we, we use GIS in the past or the immediate elections in Ghana. We use GIS to monitor and to aid the reporting of transparent and accurate election results. And I'm going to take us through how we're able to use uh, mobile GIS for that. And um, <clears throat> basically I'll start with um, the, the whole idea about why we, we, we have gotten to this point. Democracy as, as uh, defined by Abraham Lincoln, he says that it's the government of the people by the people and for the people. And elections are the heart of uh, every democratic process. It's the only ways we try to in, uh, bureaucratize the, the objectives of, of the whole democracy process. So we try to be able to actualize our, the principles of democracy through elections. And like Abraham Lincoln said, the people also had the ones who, who choose the government. So I'll take you through some list of historical uh, procedure or the history of Ghana in terms of democracy and elections. So Ghanaians were originally colonized for a while. And after some time, they started demanding directly and indirectly for uh, independence. And they did a couple of things to demand the independence or to, to accelerate the process for independence. And one of them was in 1948, there was a, an incident called the 1948 pilot where some leaders or some people in Ghana actually created a lot of scene that they demanded independence. And as a result of that, uh, six people were arrested, which has become very phenomenal in our history. They were called the big six, even in our, on our currency, their heads are even on our currency. As a result of this route, there, there was a committee called Kose Committee that was formed. And the COSE committee came out with their findings and their report. And their re report initiated the first constitution, which was basically the 1951 constitution. It was basically just an 84 member legislative assembly. 38 members were chosen by the people, 37 represented territorial council. And then six were basically nominated to represent the council interests. And three of them were ex official members who were politically appointed. <clears throat> Finally, in March 1957, Ghana finally gained its independence to start democratic rule. But it was not long before it was degenerated into what we call the quasi-detectorship. And the quasi-detectorship led to 
our first coup d'etat in 1966. And then we had several other political regimes as a result of these processes. Now, Ghana today has moved from the first republic to the second republic, third republic, and currently we are in the fourth republic. And the, the, one of the things that has run throughout this republic period is the fact that we try and attempt to always look for transparent and credible election. And I want to share with you some of the steps that Ghana has taken over the years to introduce or to ensure transparent and then credible elections. <clears throat> so in November 1992, after the elections in November 1992, the, the party that lost was agitating that he believed that the, the, the election was uh, was organized against them. So they, they actually launched a campaign they called the Stolen Verdict. The Stolen Verdict was basically accusing the, the then Interim National Electoral Commission, which was the INEC, and then the NDC party that actually won of electoral fraud. And due to this uh, Stolen Verdict campaign, they, they, they passed a legislature that became part of our constitution. That was the Act 451 which actually established an electoral commission for Ghana. Now, in March 1994, two years after the stolen verdict campaign, an interim or there is an inter-party advisory committee, which we call IPAC. IPAC was inaugurated, and it was basically done to serve as an avenue where all stakeholders of the electoral process can discuss and make decisions regarding elections. Now, IPAC became very important before every election, and they have made significant improvement. One of them was that the opaque ballot boxes that were used in 1992 election was actually replaced with transparent ballot boxes. Through the IPAC negotiations over the years, there has also been an introduction of biometric machines that is used to verify biometric, uh, do biometric registration just to verify voters before they actually vote. And this is to improve and reduce uh, electoral fraud. Just after this, the recent election, the 2020 election, the, the NDC party, that's the party that lost, has also uh, come up with about 30 reforms or proposals, 30 reform proposals. They wish that it should be included in the Act 451. And it's by one of them is that the IPAC should be backed by legislature. The other one is that they want a designated court for electoral disputes and offenses before, during, and after election. So we see that there has the, the whole issue about free and fair election and transparent election has been one of the things that we, we are spending a lot of time and a lot of uh, thinking around and trying to find solution. But the most important thing that we looked at was basically what are the key indicators of a transparent and credible election. In a transparent and credible election, the citizens should have the chance to re register and, and vote. Uh, the voters should also have access to accurate information that will help them to make decisions as to where they will vote and who they will vote for. The citizens should also have their opinion. Uh, they have the option to run for office. So if uh, someone wants to also go for any political role or position, citizens should be able to have the option to do that without any intimidation or any other force behind to stop them. The polling stations or any other means should be made available so that all people can, all people who are eligible to vote can also vote, unlike a transparent and incredible election. And also the people who can vote should also go out to vote without fear of being intimidated. We also, <clears throat> another key indicator is that voting should be free of tampering and the ballot boxes should be counted properly and the results should be announced correctly. But in all, the election results should be respected under a transparent and credible election. Now, the, one of the key words that, that flows through all these transparent and credible election is free and fair election. I want to take a minute to explain what, what that is. So a free election is one which all the citizens have the chance to vote for the candidate of their choice. And then a fair election is the one which all the ballot ballots are counted fairly and equally. Now, looking at this, who are the keys to the free and fair election? For our project, we identified two major key, um, keys. 
that's the observers, the citizens, and then the media. The observer's duty was to observe and monitor the police stations and its agents. And they also were supposed to go and cast their votes. They should observe the counting and the collation of the votes to ensure that there's transparency. So if you see the picture behind, in a normal counting of votes, the, the papers are counted one at a time. So observers around the police stations can actually have the opportunity to follow the counting and ensure that everyone is satisfied before it leaves. The media has a technology that they can use to reach out to greater number of people. So the media becomes very important to spread the news to them or to create a mass communication to reach a broad audience. Now during the election, <clears throat> the role the media play is that they, have, they become the watchdogs and then the media also become, it, it serves as a campaign platform. So all political parties are giving the opportunity if they choose if they choose to go to any media house a given opportunity to use that medium as a means to reach out to the masses and give them the information or whatever campaign message that they have uh, that this happens before the elections also the media also serves as a forum where people debate and uh, have discussion and public voice are being heard and in this kind of uh, discussion, people get to make decisions and get to understand issues better. The media also become a public educator in the terms of processes people should follow to be able to vote, how people should uh, find the places they need to vote, and other information that needs to be given to the general people. So everyone will be informed and we all have equal information to make decisions about our uh, voting. Now, the, the objective of our project was basically to take the observer and the media, and then we wanted to create a synergy of, wanted to synergize the coordination between the observers and the mass media in reporting the 2020 election. So our specific objective was basically to provide a near real time in election reporting. We also wanted to provide security for the media reporters because sometimes they're, because they're, they are actually going to create an open and transparent system. Those who do not want that seek their mass threats. So we wanted to provide a security for the media reporters. And also we, also provided, we also wanted to provide an evidence-based issue reporting from the polling station. The first um, <clears throat> electoral commission for Ghana, uh, when the electoral disputes came some time ago, one of the things that he made categorically clear and educated all political parties and citizens who were interested was that elections are won at the polling stations and not at the electoral commission. So when issues are understood from the polling stations directly, then projections can be right and then the people would be, would be satisfied with, or people can make their decisions at the polling station before it even goes to the electoral commission. So we wanted to create a system where there will be an evidence-based issue reporting for, for the people. Also, wanted to also sanitize the general public observation with the mass media. So the, the, the mass media has their people on the field who are giving them information. However, the general public are also actively involved in this and they have some information where the mass media agents may not have. So we wanted to create a system where the mass media can uh, take information from the general public and infuse it with the reports that they also get as well. And then we also wanted to provide a trend election behavior uh, system so that before election, mostly during the elections, a lot of discussion goes on. And one of the things is to look at the past behavior of people in that locations and how they've been going about voting. So we can use those information to influence and project what is likely to happen or even see the changes that has happened over time. Okay. So now how was GIS used? We, we actually, collaborated with uh, one media house, which was in Ghana, we call Atinka Media Village. So we collaborated with Atinka Media Village. And our target was to look at before the voting, during the voting and after the voting. So we were actively involved before the voting from, the voting was on the 7th of December. We started uh, being involved from 1st of this, uh, from, it was the 7th of November, we started involve, involving ourselves from the 1st of November all the way till the electoral commission finally gave, gave its final way. Now the process was basically, uh, we created a couple of uh, apps. So we had 
collector for ArcGIS was used as one of the mobile apps that we use. We also created operational dashboards that was also providing feeds to what is happening on the various uh, pooling stations. And then we also created a customized mobile application, which was Android Bid, which was what, uh, already on uh, Play Store. Okay, so it was on Play Store for the media people to also download. It. So before the election, so this is what happened. Uh, we had the a customized application we call the I voted. The I voted, the focus was in the morning before the election starts, we're interested in looking at the equity and the equality in the electoral process across the country. So around across the country, we wanted to see all the things that needs to be at every police station. What is the status of those, those information? So the, if you look at the right side, that is the interface of the I voted. And the I voted basically will take the reporter's name, will take the, the town the person is reporting from, the region, the constituency, and then the polling station where the person is reporting from. If there is any issue or experience the person wants to share, it, it allows you to provide those information. And then as well, you give us information about the security. So whether the security personnel were present as at the time the agent was on the was at the polling station, whether the ballot boxes were present, whether the EC officials were present at those polling stations, and whether the polling agents are also present. <clears throat> With this information, we were able to uh, have an idea about what is happening in various uh, polling stations. And it allows you to, I know this one did not, because the, the app has to, it has to scroll, so it has to scroll down. But this is a screenshot, so you did not see the part, but you have the option to provide pictures of whatever is happening at the polling station. And this is geocode as such that when you share the information, the location from which the data was coming from automatically comes from the app as well. So I'm going to do show a live demo of the I voted. And then we can, I don't know if you can still see my screen. I've changed my slide. Yes, uh, we can see. Okay. We can. So on the dashboard, this is what at the, the media house, this is what they could see. So on the dashboard, when the data was coming from the mobile phones. Hello, Francis. See. Yeah, hello. I think we are still on your Google Doc uh, interface. Okay. I think I have to. All right. Okay. okay. We can now see the inter the console. Yeah. Okay. So now this is a dashboard for the I voted. The I voted was was such that people, uh, the media houses could see this. So at a glance, we could tell the system was designed such that within 24 hours, it hides all data that has come within 24 hours and give you data that was recorded that day. However, it would not take away the total data, accumulated data over the time, over the period. So currently I just sent one data for this uh, presentation purposes. I just sent one data. So today we have received only one data. And aside the data we have received, uh, overall during the election, we had over 281 reports coming from various polling stations. And out of these reports, we had 92.17% of security presence. We had Overall ballot boxes in the various police stations were about 98.5%. Uh, we also had 98% um, of EC officials who were present. And then we also got to know the overall pooling agent present were 97. And in, in all, we say that the setup is ready. We are ready for voting. We had about 96%. Now, the, 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 this was supposed to give the media and then the general public a very good information about the fact that the electoral commission and then the people are ready to start to vote. Over the years, we had issues where some elections start and after one hour, two hours, some police stations report that they have not even started voting because their ballot boxes are not in or uh, the electoral commission respondents are not there. And it takes hours after the election has started for this information to reach the media because the media it's not it's not privy to that information on the first on the first hand 
Now, this information that comes, we also get to see from the location or get to query. So we can search for a particular data that we want. If we want, it, has, it gives us the opportunity to search for all data that has come. We can look at it from real time map. <clears throat> so currently, this is the data that I sent today. So whenever there's information coming from the I voted, the system or the computer or the TV which is mounted, this dashboard is mounted on, actually blows an alarm. So whenever a message comes in, you receive an alarm which draws the attention that a report has been received. And when we come to the map, we can see where the report is coming from. I currently just did this because the time I have is small to demonstrate the, the beeping and stuff. But then you can click on this, you can get to know the information. So this was reported by Francis, uh, the region is central region, the constituency is the Aguna West, the polling station is Adan GHS, and uh, this is the town I'm, I'm currently from, and then the security issues, all the other things. I didn't put any comments here, but if I had put any comments, that would have also come here. And then I've also loaded picture, I think because of the internet, it's not loading, but I also loaded uh, a picture here, which uh, the media houses can look at it. So they look at this and during the, before the election start, these are some of the things that raise the issues of discussion at the media room or the chat room. And they have the opportunity to export this also as, a, as an Excel. Okay, so I'm going to go back to uh, my, my slide and then I'll show. Okay, so during the election, most of the time, so this that's the I voter was used before the election. If you get to the polling station, you fill up whatever you need to fill, you send, and then the media houses were receiving it, and that was what was used in the discussion. And then during the election, when the voting started itself, we were interested in mapping the polling stations. So the collector for ArcGIS was with the the media house agents. The media house had about 240 agents that we trained. So the 240 agents were distributed across the country. And these 240 agents, when they get to a location, they get to a polling station, they tell us the name of the polling station. They confirm that the spelling or the, the way the people locally, the name uh, is configured there. And then they also give us the information about what is happening at the particular polling station. So they could send a picture, they could send um, any case that's happening at, at those various police station. The second thing they do is that they turn on their tracking. So we want, we want to be able to receive information about us and an agent get to the police station and throughout the election where the agent is moving to. So they turn on their tracking so that we can, when they move, we can see where they are going to. The, the reason for this was that we wanted to provide security side that if a pooling agent, if by our monitoring, we realize that a pooling agent has stopped at a particular place for more than some number of minutes, and that place is neither a pooling, a, a pooling station, the place is neither uh, anything, it's not a place relating to any of the election procedure, then that person needs, we need to find out what's happening with the person not to basically accuse them of anything, but we were just looking out for them for the fact that some of them might have been um, confronted along the way from one polling station to the other, to another. The other one was that in case any polling agent had, had been kidnapped, we would see the last place or the last location where the person was actually kidnapped. And from there, that's where the search will be, will be done. So this was what was done with the tracking of their, um, they, they turning on their tracking. Okay, so we're actually trying to uh, provide that. And then we also provided from 1992 all the way to 2016, we had geocoded and created a dashboard for all the election results that has, that has occurred over the, the period. And with that election results, the media house chat room was using that to discuss issues relating to how things were going in those uh, places. Okay, so I would <coughs> going to show you the, the dashboard also for that as well. 
So previous elections, so we have from 1992, 1996, 2000, 2004, 2008, all the way to 2016. And we chose two major parties because those, those were the major parties that people were interested in or they are the ones who mostly uh, get most of the votes. So we focus on them because we this project was done in a matter of three weeks and we had a lot of work to do. So we had uh, NPP and NDC and we could actually get to know in 1996 what was the result for NPP against NDC. We can check for 2000 what was the results against NPP to uh, NDC. And we can look at it from regional point of view. So if you click on a region, it will give you the calculation of the region total of election. So if we are looking at the Ghana, there's a there's an assumption that voting is also based on tribal uh, line. So if we take a dominated tribal area or region, we look at the voting changes that has occurred over the years, and then we can look at that. Constituency wise, we could also zoom to constituency and then look at uh, the votes, the total vote that's happening between these two places. So the chat room was actually using this to be able to have a discussion about what to expect in 2020 election, during the election, as the election was going on. This is for the parliamentary, and we did the same thing for the presidential. So we had, this is for the presidential. So we had uh, these two dashboards that was being used in the chat room. And that was in waiting for the final 2020 election to be over, and then we'll get the new, the new result from the 2020 election. <clears throat> Sorry, I have to swap between the start because of. Okay, so now after we, during the election, we were able to. Uh, get a lot of discussion in the chat room between the between the the panel who were there. I think they were coming from different background, and every day we were there for like seven days or so. And every day they had different panels from different background or different uh, points of view to come over and then look at it. So we could they, have, they could have a lot of discussion over the seven days, comparing previous elections and and what's, what is happening, trying to explain that. Now, the collector of YGIS was also used again during, after the election was announced, when the 2020 election was announced, and it was connected to a dashboard. So the agents who, who got the results in their polling stations enter the results in the polling station within the collector and submit. And once they submit, in real time, the dashboard updates, then we can be able to see the results, the total results that was coming. And that was the heat moment. That was a, the time that most people were anxious. So we were actually in the control room. So the team was in the control room of the, of the media house while the panelists were there. And we were trying to coordinate with some of the people on the field. It wasn't rosy. I was I would explain some of the challenges we had with that. But then that's basically what they did. So we, they do it that way, then we update, the, the dashboard gets updated. And in some cases, we have to update the dashboard manually. Now, by the end of the, the election, when the Electoral Commission announced its result, we had uh, the final result from the Electoral Commission for the MPP, and then the, the final one for the NDC, were basically 6,730,000 30,413, which representing 51.29%. Uh, and the media house, the dashboard that we created for reporting, at that same real time, we had received 6,678,799 votes, also for the MPP. And then we had also 6,214,889 for NDC. And then we had 6,124,481 for for the NDC. Now, this, this, there's a small margin between what the Electoral Commission brought and then what we got. But I think so far, I think TV in 2020 was reported to be part of the top five media houses that actually provided accurate and credible election, uh, credible coverage of the 2020 election. And as, as a result, it's contributing result is also as a fact that they were able to project and give results in real time. 
So they, they attracted a lot of people to watch them because people were anxious to know the results and other people were using, they wait for a while before they can get the results. But I think I would, would get a result in, in a few seconds because the dashboard and everything was coordinated together. And in, in total, we actually was very close to the final results from the, from the electoral commission. Now, the reason why we could not get exactly the, the results from the electoral commission, we had only one media houses on board and that media house had only 240 uh, agents. And these 240 agents were spread across the various polling stations. But we have more than 240 uh, polling stations across the country. So we didn't have agents represented in every polling station. They actually have to move from one polling station to the other, and it slowed down the delivery of data that we got. And then secondly, we also um, had issues with uh, funds to promote I voted. So I voted was put on the on the Play Store, the Google Play Store, and it was supposed to, uh, it was meant for the citizens to download so that when you go and you vote, it's, that's why we call it I voted. So when you go and you vote, you go and tell us what's happening, what, what was the case, what was the issue when you were at the polling station. So I come in and I feel the, and I submit, yes, I voted. And once I say, yes, I voted, I send along the things that I have, um, the things that I have actually seen at the polling station. And the, 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 the information coming from independent citizens was supposed to provide a very good transparency in the reports coming from the media, but then we couldn't get money to promote. So many citizens did not even know, did not even know about I voted. So we couldn't get I voted to get out to the people. That's one of the major challenges. So the agent has to work at the same time as citizens. One other one is also we didn't get collaboration from the electoral commission. They, to some extent, the electoral commission supported in giving us information about election results over the years from 1992. But then uh, it was just providing us with election results. And those were just PDF. We had to manually code everything uh, ourselves because the PDFs, the only one we had in Excel was 1992. And it had a lot of formatting. A lot of things were merge and then split it. So when we tried to put everything together, the data was messed up. So we had to geocode them uh, manually ourselves. And so we we thought that this, if the electoral commission had been on board, every uh, polling station would have had a representative who is actually looking out for this, providing information from the polling station. And the electoral commission probably would have had also uh, indication of what is happening at various polling stations and take actions in time before it was too late. Also, the agents were not used to GIS. So when the heat came, some of them stopped using the app. And that was the reason why we couldn't get the updated information. They stopped using the app and they were sending the, the results through WhatsApp. And we had to sit in the control room and people were sending us the WhatsApp and we have to manually add them to update the dashboard because some information were going to the dashboard direct, others were coming from uh, people from WhatsApp directly. The challenge is that if the if someone if at a at a min, in a minute you can get more than ten different WhatsApp results coming from different places, and if you because of the heat, if there is any over overlooking or oversight, you would, you will not be able to include that particular data into the election results. So we had a problem with they just boycotting everything and going back to the way they used to do their things and. They were finding the WhatsApp more convenient and they were sending videos and pictures to the WhatsApp more than using the app at some point when the election, especially when the election results started being contested by those who were losing, then they didn't have time to send any information again. Okay, so that's that's a problem. Now the way forward in future opportunities. Now we've, we've seen that GIS, mobile GIS can actually help us to be able to provide a very uh, accurate and transparent election, electoral process. And it's very important that we get more media houses to be on board. If more media houses come on board, the agents for various media houses can be put together and those agents put together can increase the number of representatives at various polling stations and we'll be able to cover every polling station in the country. Also, we also uh, anticipate that all other organizations that are used, that are interested in monitoring and evaluating electoral processes should also come on board. 
So if they are all on board, then we can be able to provide a copy of this dashboard to all their institutions so they can be able to re uh, receive information in real time and coordinate whatever they need to coordinate. We also need, uh, I think that we need, we need funds to do a lot of promotion. I think it's not about the development has been done. iVoter has already been developed and it's working, but the, the, the opportunity to market it, to let the people get to know that there's something called iVoted, how to use it, and letting people to be able to get used to the way GIS work would be a very good advantage when we start now, because now when we do all the media, the small, small election electoral processes, if we are using this system, by the time we get to the national election, we should be able to have the people, the agents especially, being used to GIS now, so they wouldn't boycott the system because they are finding it too uh, slow or they are finding their they are not finding their way around the way to use the app. We also think that it's a good thing for the EC to adopt this. If the EC is able to adopt it, now we don't have data on polling stations in Ghana. We are actually looking for location data on polling stations in Ghana. And it's very important to look at the distribution of the polling station, the, the coverage of a polling station, how to be able to tell the people that are actually at a disadvantage and the people that are not, how to even uh, make a decision on which places need more polling stations to be able to enhance their ability to vote. I think that those things were also not uh, were not captured during the 2020. So easy adoption of this process would be a very good uh, way forward. And political parties over the, the years, since especially 2016 and 2020, have contracted private um, organizations and individuals to develop a dashboard for them, which they use to also report their results. The challenge with this is that they have their money and they can go ahead and contract anyone they want to. But the challenge is, is with this is that the results that comes from the, the political, each political party seems to be different from what the other person got. And secondly, we also realize that the, the issues that are raised by different political parties seems not to be issues that was raised in the other political party. If I voted, for instance, was used as a general dashboard, 